Hey y'all, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to take a look at setting moods in our scene using procedural color palettes. So we're gonna look at how to set the sky color, the fog color, the fog density, and just quickly cycle through a lot of kind of looks and get a feeling for something that we might wanna create. Let's check it out. Here in Unity, I've got my test palette here. Let's go ahead and pick some colors. Let's go for like an orange and yellow palette. Let's generate that. Let's find something we like. Here's a kind of a, a nice range of colors. Let's enter play mode. So what we can see here is that we're setting the sky color. This is the background for the main camera. We're setting the fog color and the fog density randomly from our world color control script here. So we have a color palette asset. If you have been following the channel, you would have seen last week that I did the video about procedurally generating these color palettes. So check that out if you're interested and you haven't seen it. And then we also have a reference to the main camera so that we can set the background color on it and then a minimum and maximum value for the fog. So let's take a look at if we cycle through, like, whoa, this is a, like a little freaky, right? A little apocalyptic orange sky. It just gives us a, a feeling, right? It's like kind of, this is also a different mood, right? The pink sky and the pink fog with the, with the different colored houses kind of gives us a different feel. The colors on the houses are also being set. That's kind of cool too. Switch up the colors a little bit. Let's try and go for maybe a blue and orange. Got to hit generate on the palette. Or maybe let's try and go for something a little more with some more variation in it. Let's go blue, green, and actually that orange is not bad. Kind of maybe blue, green, and magenta. Whoa, that red sky. That's kind of cool, I like that. Generate a few more palettes. Whoa, that's kind of cool. Those are the house colors. I kind of like to play around with these combinations of sky color matching the fog color to the sky color. We could also make the fog color different from the sky color if we wanted to. Here it's gone black. If we go ahead and, you know, you could do some subtle differences, but I feel like generally speaking, it looks better when you match the two. Again, this is in this low poly look, right? This is obviously not a, a realistic look, but I feel like you can, you can do this to quickly iterate through a bunch of color ideas, save the ones that you like, just get some creative inspiration, right? And I think that a lot of the time we think about procedural generation as a way to kind of push one button, start a process that cascades out and generates a whole world. But I think it's also interesting to have these tight iteration cycles where you generate something, save the one you like, you're generating a lot of things and then picking cool ideas that come out of it, right? I think this is also this kind of loop between human and procedural process is also a really cool and interesting workflow. Really, there's not a lot going on here code-wise. If we go into our world color control, it's really just, we're taking in a reference to our multicolor palette, right? We learned how to make that in the previous video. We're taking in a reference to the camera, the fog minimum and the fog maximum as floats, right? Those are the minimum and maximum values. And then we're just generating a color, which is called sky fog color. We're getting it out of our palette, right? We're picking a random color from the output colors. We're setting the background color to the sky fog color. We're setting the render settings dot fog color. Again, this is using the built-in render pipeline. It's gonna be a little bit different if you're using universal or HDRP, but the same approaches are possible. And then in the render settings dot fog density, we're picking a random value for the amount of fog. You could also integrate this with Unity's post-processing stack to do some color tints on the whole image. I think that would actually be really interesting. I think there's a lot of directions you could go with this. This is just a simple idea, just to give you this idea of kind of looping, generating colors, picking ones that you like. I thought it was kind of fun. And then I'll just show you, because I didn't show it in the previous video, the little scene reloader that I mentioned before. It's just super simple. We're just saying in update, if I press the space bar, we're just gonna call scene manager .load scene and then scene manager dot get active scene dot name because load scene needs to take in a string with the scene name. So we're just getting that name and just saying, this is so we don't have to add it to the build settings or anything. We can just hit space and reload whatever scene we have open, right? Just for quick iteration. In some of my other videos, I've done things where I don't reload the scene and I keep everything in a list and do it that way. But here, because the scene is so simple, I can just, it's one button press to just quickly 
reload everything and get a, get a new look. Hopefully you found that interesting. If you're enjoying the content on the channel, please do uh, consider subscribing. Important also, if you wanna be notified when new videos come out, I do them every week, please turn on the notifications bell. That way you will definitely get a notification as a subscriber. If you're already subscribed and you're not seeing all the videos, YouTube's algorithm won't always show them to you unless you have notifications turned on. So please consider turning that on if you want to. Drop a like on the video to let me know you enjoyed it or a dislike if you want me to go in a different direction or if there's something you didn't like about it. I'd love also if you drop me a comment to let me know what that was or, or any other questions that you have. That's always fun for me to see. And as always, thanks so much for uh, spending some of your time with me. I really appreciate it and I will see you next time. Bye.